And can you tell us, you know, a paying customer, just how important is this for the new Glenn? It's a huge step for Blue Origin as a company. I mean, this is a space exploration company that has really lived on Jeff Bezos's dream, and now they actually have some revenue in the forms of a paying customer. And it's notable that this announcement was made at Satellite 2017. This is the satellite industry's premier networking and conference event. So, you know, this is probably the first of what will likely be more paying clients in the future. I believe is. Utilsat's already been a customer potentially of SpaceX. How does how does SpaceX and Virgin Galactic compare to where Blue Origin is right now? Right. So I think what we're seeing in the space industry as a whole is the continual development and improvement of new and more powerful rockets that are capable of launching satellites to geostationary orbit, which is you know very far away. And so uh, New Glenn is the rocket that Blue Origin is working on. Uh, they say that their launch contract with Utilsat is for 2021, so it's still a couple of years out. But, um, you know, New Glenn is going to be a very powerful rocket, uh, you know, on the scope of which we just haven't seen in this country for quite some time. And I think you're seeing Bezos kind of expand beyond space tourism to commercial paying customers. I mean, quite phenomenal leaps being made. There's a great story out on the Bloomberg um, saying about taxpayers and potentially how much they might be on the hook the next time a space mission by SpaceX or indeed Orbital ATK or private companies actually fail. Is this something that you think is becoming known by the general public or is, is this something the private companies should be having to look to themselves? Well, I think that, you know, the launch industry as an industry is very familiar with mishaps. And whenever a rocket explodes on a launch pad or shortly after flight, it's a setback for the industry as a whole because images of burning rockets don't do anyone any good. I think the whole insurance <laughs> question is, is a really interesting one. Oftentimes there's dual insurance or, um, you know, the, the way that the insurance deals are structured tends to be different uh, for each provider. But what you're going to see going forward is bigger, heavier, more powerful rockets capable of launching uh, heavier and grander payloads and uh, you know now if you're a satellite company you have more options you can go on SpaceX you can go on Ariana Spas eventually you'll be able to go on Blue Origin and so as for the satellite industry this is great for them because they have more op options and there's more competition which ultimately will lower the cost for everyone. Great for satellite what about great for the consumer who is desperate to get into space? Virgin Galactic ticket holders have been pushed back and pushed back. Do you have any time frames, particularly for what Blue Origin is promising? Well, they, they're talking about taking tourists to the edge of space uh, for a few minutes of weightlessness and then bringing them back. I don't know what the timeline for that is, but I think it's within the next couple of years. And of course, they're, they've kind of leaned on what they've learned from the test flights of New Shepard to help develop New Glenn, which is the new rocket that they're talking about. And Donna, just remind, remind us of what Jeff Bezos' grand view here. We know that Elon Musk is a visionary who potentially looks at us living outside into space. What, what does Jeff Bezos hope to achieve? I mean, they're similar guys in that they are both, you know, tech billionaires who made their fortunes in the Internet and then immediately plowed those fortunes into private space companies. Um, you know, Bezos started uh, Blue Origin 15 years ago with the millions that he earned as Amazon CEO, and they were relatively quiet until recently. But his vision is similar in that he wants to have millions of people living and working in space.